This is the third part of my takeaway video series. Can you acquire a new skill in just one minute per day? Well, I'm three months now into my little art project. And as usual, I have a long list here that I prepared on my phone with the things that I've learned in these past 30 days or a little more than 30 this time. So, I also prepared a little Excel document on my computer now so I can keep track on how much time I have spent painting. So it's a normal day, it's 60 seconds and then I have the milestones which are no time limit and I add the number of minutes that I have spent. The total number of minutes since I started this project and it's about 5 hours and 50 minutes now when I did the, the, the last milestone. I have my, my, uh, my Labrador here, Jussi, so he's gonna disturb me while I'm doing this conversation. Hopefully not too much, but we'll see. <laughs> well, anyway, hey, lovely. <laughs> the last milestone painting I did, I, uh, I painted the digger on the side of the road. And something that struck me just the day after I had recorded the podcast, it was that there was this street lights in, in the image. And I've been walking this road perhaps thousands of times by now. And in the paint, painting, I painted the light post on the other side of the road. On the wrong, wrong side of the road. And that's fascinating. Even though I've walked there a thousand times and I know exactly where that light post is, but when I was I entered that trance-like state and started painting. I, I tried to paint what I saw instead on the photograph. And somehow my brain interpreted that the, the light post was on the, on, on the other side of the road. So it's, it's, it's a really strange thing. And another one that was quite of a shock to me was that I've seen this road junction thousands of times. And when I passed it the next time after doing the painting, it was like I could see an extreme amount of details in the motif that I haven't seen before. So what I realized that is when you're painting, you will perceive the world in a completely different way. The things that you paint, you really go into them and you start to notice things that you that have been there all the time, but you haven't seen them until you've painted them. Please. Can you just leave me the lo alone for a little while? And that's going to be right, quite interesting where I'll end up in a year when I start painting a lot of things around me and I will experience them in a completely different way. And here's the neck. Do. <laughs> Snella. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be a long podcast. I realized also that if I paint faster, I will get more engagement and better feedback. So I, 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 in the beginning of this past month, I just tried to increase the speed, paint faster, and I just accelerated and did it as fast as I could. And it turns out that those pictures tend to get more engagement and more thumbs up and more comments. And that's, that's cool, that's interesting. Maybe it's because if I speed it up, the, speed up the process, I will have an easier time to enter the, the trance-like state. Another thing I did is uh, I was on a journey and I, I visited my parents, so I was there for a couple of days. And I, I didn't have the ability to paint on, on my, my trusty iPad with the Apple Pencil as I usually do. So, but there's the thing, the rule is you paint for 60 seconds using whatever tools you have. If, if, it, if I'm in a tough situation, I can even go and draw lines in the sand on a, on a beach, or if it's dust uh, on, a, on a, a car, you can draw it. I mean, it, it's also painting. It's a painting, and it's going to take 60 seconds, and you can choose completely free. That's my rules. So I found some post-it notes and a, and a ball rolling pen. So I just grabbed some post-it notes and a ball roller, and I started painting on those. And that, that's an interesting thing that it's like some kind of conceptual art. Because then when I did the post-it paintings several times, and I keep repeating the same type of painting, 
one, two or three times might not be enough. You might need to hammer on it and keep pushing many times and you might find something really interesting when you take this conceptual path with your experimental paintings. I also started to experiment more with different uh, brushes and different pencils. I use a pr program, an app called Sketchbook. I don't remember who developed it, but it's, it's a great app. It's um, got a lot of pencils which you can choose from. So I've, I, the first default one is the one I've used the most, but now I'm starting to try out some paint brushes and uh, some different things because you get a completely different style when you change the pencil. It's the same thing as a musician. When you grab another instrument, you can play completely different styles. And uh, an eight string electric guitar is much more suited to do death metal than if you take a uh, steel string acoustic, even though you can do it on both, but one of them is more appropriate for the, for the style. And that's the same thing with paints, paint uh, brushes and pencils as well. You get a different style. And then I also started to mix different pencils, because that's kind of cool. I, I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm just, just trying it out as I go and see what happens. And, and the, it's a bit of a challenge, it's, uh, it's like when you play a computer game and you start to do like time trial and battle with yourself and try to beat your high score. And it's, How many colors can I cram into 60 seconds? How many times will I be able to change and use different pens and different pencils? And, Go from the pencil to the pen brush and do the watercolor and jump between them. And you have to be really, really fast if you're going to do all that in 60 seconds. And what that means is that you also have to start thinking in layers. Like maybe you have to do the background first and then you paint something on top of the background and, and you do it in the right way. You're going to start with the, if you're going to do a reflection, perhaps start with a dark color and then you switch to the white and you add some splashes of white where you have light reflections. And you do it just before the timer runs out. So you have to have some little strategy in your head on how to approach it and in which order you should do it. Because if you start to change pencils just uh, without a plan, the timer runs out very quickly. And I, I think actually I, I did some cheating on a couple of them, but I, I think I mentioned it in the, in the comments as well when I posted them that this one was more than 60 seconds because I had some technical issues because I couldn't get the pen to go where I, to shift into the type of pencil that I wanted and to find the color. So, so there was a little bit of cheating on my part, but I, now I'm, I'm back to following the rules again, because I'm, I'm getting up the speed. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Yeah, cell shading, that's quite kind of a fun method of painting, because then you have to use a pen or pencil that is um, like solid, so you can get an enclosed cell. If you do circle, it has to be a closed circle. And then you do this paint bucket tool. You have it in Microsoft Paint like since ancient times. And it's the same, same kind of te technology. You, you draw cells and then you just use the paint bucket and fill them with different colors. And that, that's a way to really quickly create life into the painting. And then you can add with some shades and reflections on it as well. So. Cell shading is it's quite fun. And I also noticed, especially like two weeks ago, it's, it's harder and harder to keep those 60 seconds. I want to do more. I, get a real, I have a really strong urge to keep painting once, and once I've started. This is perhaps one of the most difficult things now. In three months have passed and it just keeps getting harder and harder and harder to just stop when the bell rings. But uh, I'm gonna keep doing the 60 second thing because I, I believe that there is something to it. it. It really forces you to enter a really focused state of mind because if I know that there is a lifeline that I can keep on and continue, I think I believe that my focus will not be as sharp as if I know that you got these 60 seconds, that's all you have, deal with it. That's also a good thing because when you have a family and you have other obligations to attend to in your life, it's a very good thing to know that it's only 60 seconds 
I think that uh, my wife appreciates it quite a lot that it's uh, <laughs> that every time I, I grab the painting, except for the milestones, which tend to be an hour or two, but all the normal ones, they are very fast. I, I think the whole process with putting up the motif and drawing it and yeah, it, it's, it's a matter of a, a minute, minute, two minutes, three minutes. I, I can do it really fast now and that's a good thing for everyone. Maybe I should, yeah, see here, maybe I should be even more conceptual, like perhaps choose one style and work with it for a week, two weeks, or choose, this, like this is cell shading month, month perhaps, I don't know, that was a thought I had during the month, I don't think I'm going to take up on that one because I'd rather have these 60 seconds completely free and I can do whatever I want with them. Because if I do some traveling or if I'm in the field or somewhere else and I, yeah, like you saw, I, I've done a couple of things this last uh, week with the finger painting. I use my iPhone and I just paint with my finger. And that's quite fun because it's a new tool, it's a new method. And that brings new ideas and you see that you learn new stuff just by the fact that you're using something else. And when you're painting with a finger, you, you have no precision, there, there's not much detail in them. So that means that you have to focus on other things in the image. Like com composition or contrast with colors and stuff like that. Because I, I, you, can, you can do cool stuff in, even with your finger on your phone, if you keep practicing. I did one with an animal, uh, a frog. Or a toad. Toad is the correct name on those guys. My wife held the toad and he had like orange eyes. So um, it was a difficult one to paint. So, uh, it was like some contours. But then I did the eye and I did it orange. And I I think when, when you have an image and you have something in that image which has a strong contrast, like the eye in orange, it really pops and makes the image interesting. So that's something that I've been using a bit. Especially like with my latest milestone when I painted my dog. I uh, put a lot of effort into the eyes. The eyes and the nose, nose and the area around here. Because that's like the centerpiece of, of the whole image. And then if you look at the background it's just a mess. But that doesn't matter because it's like when, when, you, when you look with your vision and you compare with your peripheral vision you see like nothing in your peripheral vision, it's very blurry, but you have a small, small point of focus on the thing that you look at, which is super clear, but everything else has no detail until you shift your look, your eyes and you look straight at it. So that's the thing you can capture with the, when, when you put a lot of detail on, on the correct stuff. And that's also an interesting thing that you, you, you can't get stuck in the details. Like if, if I start do the milestone painting, and I put a lot of energy into the background, then I have less time to invest in painting my dog. And that's going to make a, probably a quite horrible painting. I could not do it, do it justice at all. So you have to do it in the right order to get the focus on what really matters. But anyway, Yeah, yeah, here's also another thing about the finger painting on the phone. Like, it's super fast. You always have your smartphone with you. I mean, this is perhaps even faster than, than grabbing a pen and paper. Because if you use your phone, you, you do the painting, you use it to photograph the stuff that you're painting, and uh, you do a screenshot, and then you post it to Instagram. Everything from one single device, and it's always with you. So, uh, the threshold is now lower than ever. Because this I can do anytime, anywhere, as long as I have the phone. I'm still struggling with that my mind, my brain, <laughs> is painting what I think I already know and not what I actually see. If I should paint this coffee press it would just take a couple of seconds into the painting before, yeah, I know this is a handle and it's bent like uh, the letter C, depending on from which way you look at it, of course. But 
instead of looking at it how it's actually bent and then you'll see you know, it's not actually a C it's a bit larger radius down here and here's a smaller radius on the on the on the arc and stuff like that so so that's it's so easy the brain just wants to shift into painting my memory of the thing and or how I know that it looks like instead of just looking at it and and painting what I what I see the, the, it's like the brain is struggling to fall back down in well-known tracks that you've been treading for, a lo treading for a long time. So that's why I wrote here that my third milestone should probably be something that I don't know at all what it looks like. And uh, I, I have been thinking on a couple of things that I've passed with my car and uh, stuff like that. But when, when push came to shove, when it, when it was time to do the third my, milestone, that, that's why I determined to, to take this uh, photograph of my dog. It was a fresh photograph, I think it was from the day before. So it, it was fresh in my brain still, fresh in my mind. And it's something that I, I don't know what it looks like. That, that sounds a bit silly because of course I know what my dog looks like, but you go ahead, try to paint your pet. It's not an easy thing to do with all the muscles and the legs and when they're sitting down. How, how is a dog actually, where, is, where does he put his legs when he's sitting down? How does the tail go? And, I mean, it's uh, anatomy. It's quite complex. So that was fun. It was something new. To, to paint something that is alive and uh, I think it was it turned out pretty good let's see if I find it here he is the dog Here, here's the original photograph of him and here's here's my painting of him so I put a lot of energy into the face but the proportions are not quite there. It's like he's a bit more cartoonish. Like he looks like <laughs> he looks really, really cuddly and friendly in this picture. So that's quite fun. Maybe it's his personal attributes that have shaped my portrait of him. <laughs> and uh, another thing that I've learned here with this last one because I usually the first two milestones I did like 30 day intervals or 31 days because that's a one precisely one month I couldn't do this this time because I know for a fact that when I start to do the milestone I need to have allocated time where I can focus and be completely relaxed and not worry about being interrupted because that is a killer of creativity if I just worry about it, I will be interrupted. So that's why I had to plan it so I could do it in the evening after my son went to bed and we'd done all the chores and everything and then I know what, okay, now I'll, I'll go and paint and I paint until it's done, even if it's gonna go into the night, but at least I know I won't be interrupted and that's the proper time to do it because then you can focus. You really need to focus when you do this milestone, so you get in the zone. It's just a little trick to enter that self-hypnosis state of mind. Extremely powerful when you get it right. And for me, it's the, the key is to make sure that I have nothing booked after my milestone. I'm completely free afterwards. That way there, there is no upper time limit. And I, I, was, I, I think one to two hours is probably the perfect amount of time. Because when I was painting my, my dog here, it's like... It, it didn't get, get much better. I, I, I got out of it what I wanted. It's him, here. Like the details that matter are here and... Then it's done. Get it out online and get some rest so you can continue with the 60 second sketches the next day. That's more important. 
but uh, another thing here yeah because I, I have to be more clear with my communication with my wife and my family so so we really understand each other because I was planning to do it the picture I don't remember which which day it was Friday or Saturday but she had thought that I should do it in another time that day so there was a, a little bit of friction between us and then I decided no 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 I, don't, I won't do it today we just let it go how about I do it tomorrow instead and yeah that's good so communication and make sure that you understand each other so that you can achieve this state of mind where you're pure <laughs> that uh, no negative feelings no irritation or nothing like that you have to be stable mm -hmm. stable and happy and those around you are happy if you see, get a smile before you start you go into your room and start painting I mean that's like the a killer primer to, to do the project I started to experiment for the first time ever with this one with reflections in different colors because that's something I noted when I looked really closely on the photograph of him I could see here that on the top of his face he, I mean he's black but there are different shades of black too so there's blue he's blue on his head here the brighter parts and that's the sky you have a blue sky above so it's like a, a big blue light shining from top down on us so that's why I, I did it several layers with this picture first I had a layer in the background where I used watercolor and just splashed out the green and the brown red and the grayish and the stuff that you see in the background to just get something that is reminiscent of, of this background and then I do a new layer on top of that where I paint with a black pen where I painted the no oh, that's not right this one where I painted the dog and then I did several layers more on top of that where I took a blue a dark blue pen and did some shading with blue on his head to to mimic the sky that is reflected down here and then I saw the ground here is like red brown red brownish so then I used the same red brown color here and I did some reflections with that down here so here is black and then there's a layer with dark red brown to simulate the light that's bounced on the earth and comes back at him and also I think that there's some green as well from all the trees and the grass so I did some I think I did some green here in the middle as well really small details maybe you can't even tell but it felt great to do them at least that's for sure and uh, I think when I keep experimenting with a with the different layers and the different colors with the reflections I'm gonna learn a lot of things from that it's actually quite similar to the way that uh, acoustics work with the with different sound sources in a room and how 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 that kind of sound would bounce off different surfaces and and uh, and uh, hit, hit you in different places on your body so that's like an analogy I, I think of when I do the light reflections it's pretty much the same thing but with the uh, optics instead of acoustics yeah and, and also here I did some of the grass grass here a couple of straws just around him because that that's what you can see here they are they're in front of him in the photograph and that's why I thought that I probably need to do them at, at in front of him here as well sharp and I think that that gives some depth to the painting even though it's only these little straws and nothing else and the, this one over here even has the, the seeds so it's a, quite a bit more detail here ha I see now there's a mosquito on his left leg which I have painted there as well <laughs> small details this is not too bad when I really look at it up close Oh, this is quite cool with the sun the reflection of the sun is clearly visible in his eyes and on his nose wow <laughs> and the, the the color is also I'm really happy when I see this picture it's it's awesome five hours and 50 minutes 
from scratch. I knew nothing about this. I haven't watched any tutorial on YouTube or nothing like that. I think that's a waste of time for me. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna paint. That's how I learn instead. That's the way to do it. Five hours and 50 minutes of practice. Focused practice. And I could pull this off. That's fascinating. That's really fascinating. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if I can do this in five hours and 50 minutes, just imagine what happens if you sit there and read about negative things on your smartphone every single day for at least 60 seconds or per day maybe it's minutes or hours every day that you spend reading about bad things on your smartphone just imagine how skilled you will become at feeling bad by doing that for three months straight if if i can do this with five hours and 50 minutes if I would read about crap every single day for a minute and then every month I would read for one or two hours straight I would, pre feel, I would feel pretty bad right now it's the same thing it's absolutely the same thing the more you practice on something the better you will become at it no doubt about that yeah so here's also a clear one a lot of detail on the things that matter and then you get more and more blur and diffusion the further out and the further back in the picture you go and another funny thing with this one is that it's in the it's not landscape anymore the other milestones they were painted like this but now I thought I'm gonna try to do a, a portrait mode instead Flip it up and see what happens. So that was fun. And then I have the final note here now on my, my little manuscript. And like I said about the milestone, you have to plan it with your loved ones and make sure you have a schedule that works for everyone. And the same goes with the, the podcast like this, because I wanted to do it as soon as possible after I did the milestone painting and then straight away go and record the podcast perhaps the next day but I couldn't do that there just wasn't enough time but uh, tonight I could finally record this message and uh, that's it for me 28 minutes <laughs> that's fun because they're uh, they seem to end up at around 30 minutes these little podcasts so that that's probably a good it's a good format it's a good time to to keep it around that so Let's uh, let's get back to practicing 60 seconds, not, not 60 minutes, 60 seconds every day. And I'll see you in about a month from now again. Cheers, have a good one.